the Good Girl Podcast. I am Cameo King, your host, the host of the Good Girl Podcast, a podcast of women's confessions about our flaws, faith, femininity, and culture. Everything is on the table. I hold space for women on the Good Girl Podcast. We destigmatize the messy process of figuring out life. I don't know about y'all, but a lot of my wisdom, My lessons learned, my compassion has come through very messy processes. And I call those confessions. So every week we have a confession right here on the Good Girl Podcast. And today's confession, I really don't think y'all, I really don't think we love free black women. We say we do, but I, mm, it's been some things that have said the contrary. So you may have been up under a rock this week. Um, And if you have, black women have been at the center of many national conversations for this week and a few weeks past, and a wide variety of black women, some that I consider somewhat free, some more than others. Everybody from Beyonce to the rappers Meg Thee Stallion and Cardi B to Kamala Harris. And who child, it's been a lot, right? And overall, what I found and what's been telling is that y'all really don't love black women, especially free black women. And and let me let me pause right here. I hear some of y'all saying, y'all, who is y'all? Who is y'all? So let me be clear. When I say y'all, I mean society by and large in America. They ain't got no love for us black women. But this is something we know, right? This isn't new to us. But today I want to briefly share why, right? Why America doesn't love black women, specifically free black women. And I'm defining free black woman as someone who is unapologetic in her evolution and shows up to the world as she deems fit specifically for her well-being. And so as much as I preach, teach, and encourage this freedom for women, even for girls, one thing I think I failed to explicitly say is that this freedom will cost you. This beautiful unchaining of yourself from society's expectations, that freedom, this glorious journey of moving wholeheartedly towards your desires, your calling, that freedom, this absolute wondrous full expression of every part of you, that freedom, that freedom will cost you. And it will cost you a lot, especially for black women. And we have clear examples of this, like this, these past couple of weeks, right? Because we've seen visceral reactions to the different expressions of black women living and walking in their freedom. We've demonized Beyonce for producing the 90 minute experience called Black is King. And if you don't know about that, it's a visual companion to the movie Lion King. The movie, you know, the, the movie that was made for children, the movie Lion King, we, we demonized her. Um, she essentially made art to make black folks feel proud, beautiful, and seen. I took that from a from someone on Facebook. And um, it literally was a musical that highlighted cultural practices that many of us were not familiar with, mind you, to align with a fictional story about a lion, a god dang on lion, right? Um, and I had to ask myself, did we do this to Ariel, you know, um, in a little mermaid, another Disney movie, did we do this to her whose father was a Greek God of the sea, Poseidon, whatever. I don't, I didn't want to say Poseidon. I sounded that, that just didn't sound right. Right. (laughs) But anyway, the man with the, the, with the tridents, right. Um, I don't think we had that pushback. And then a second example, Meg and Cardi, Meg Thee Stallion and Cardi B. Again, two artists, rappers. We told these two black women, these entertainers, these artists, these rappers, that they were the worst of the worst and that they didn't reserve respect because they expressed very clearly and very artistically, I'll say, that they had a desire and a love of sex through their song called WAP. And the thing about it, that's their brand. Like that is like that is I don't know when they have have not talked about the WAP, right? WAP. Um, and I don't know what else we expected. And especially coming from a former stripper who is Cardi B, whose currency was selling sex. And I'm stating that as a fact, not as a bad or good thing, but that was like that is her foundation. And the truth is, this is my little my little two second 
um, think piece on this. Uh, the truth is that all of us, we either have a WAP, <laughs> we've been in a WAP, or we came through a WAP, pun intended, right? And then yesterday, Kamala, my God, I mean, like, Real talk, this woman is the first black woman selected as a VP to a major party ticket. She's a Howard grad. Ain't you? You know? <sighs> yes. <laughs> and she's also an AKA. Ski weave also rides. Um, just a little bias. Uh, if, and just for one second, if we can just take that in, what this means for HBCUs, historically black colleges or universities, and for black organizations, not just Greek lettered organizations, but organize black people. What does this mean for them? And I consistently see the phrase, check her record. Cool, right? Check the record. So what you want me to do now? Like today, right? In the middle of August, in the 11th hour, when we literally have no other options, when Jesus is about to come back, and we are currently under the rule of Satan. What do you want me to do? Um, <laughs> and I think therein lies a problem when it comes to the response and criticisms or the accountability of free black women. When we respond to free black women showing up in our world or our constructive criticisms, I'll say, or accountability, it's typically rooted in discrediting or eliminating that person's status, worth in society, or dehumanizing her. Again, the same examples. Beyonce, we literally called her a demon and said she was demonic. If you refer to someone as a demon, you free yourself from responding to them as a human, right? Cardi and Meg, we literally said they don't, we, they don't deserve respect. That's dehumanization. Um, and then Kamala. Check her record. Again, what I just said a couple seconds ago, I still don't know what, when folks type that, what do you want us to do in this hour, in this context, under um, this current administration? What in the world do you want us to do? Especially when we haven't held that same standard of purity politics for any other candidate. Now, mind you, there are some folks who have held this duality of love for free black women while offering constructive criticism. I saw some good criticisms of the work of WAP, um, not the persons of Cardi B, but the work. Someone said, and I'm paraphrasing, again, got this from social media. Let's be honest, we're making a lot of these statements about it's a parent's job to raise their children. Don't look to Cardi and Meg as role models. We're making these statements in a bubble, right? She said, popular artists very much influence the behavior of young people and is a deciding factor in what is and isn't acceptable. Additionally, many young people do not have the privilege of a parent running up and behind them 24 seven, especially when young people have access to the internet like they do. And she was a school counselor and she said that she has consistently seen the effects, the conversations, the behavior of popular culture on the students she she serves, right? A great criticism of the work and the effects of WAP. Another another example. This one I screenshot it, um, and uh, someone had posted. Um, actually, someone who's been on our our podcast before, Candice Benbo. Um, she had posted an image of Kamala Harris and said, congratulations, something along that line. And so, you know, it's people saying like, yay, woo. She said, congratulations, Sora. She's a Sora too. Alpha Kappa Alpha, the first and the finest. Um, but someone mentioned her comment said, um, no one is going to question her mass incarceration tactics against our own people. Sheesh, we real forgiven. Candace's response said, nobody said that. Folks have continued to speak out against and push her on her stance on mass incarceration. Supporting someone and being proud of them in a moment doesn't mean you haven't held them and won't hold them accountable. And I'm definitely not going to let that place where we draw the line be on the backs of black women when we out here electing much more heinous men, black and white, and white women in local and state and national situations. 
That was an awesome, <laughs> an awesome critique response to her position, which I'm really not 100% sure on, on Kamala Harris. Still keeps the woman whole, but criticizes maybe some of her work. And what I realized over this entire week of black women showing up as they deem fit free, I realized that it is not that we disagree or that we don't like or that we just don't prefer their policies, music, music or discretion. It's that our expressed displeasure of a black woman's business, again, be it Cardi, Meg, Beyonce, Kamala, is an attempt to discredit her existence or worth. And that is the problem. I'm going to say it again. It is that our expressed displeasure of a black woman's business is typically an attempt to discredit her existence or worth. Many of the examples I've seen and even the ones I just provided show that. What was the goal of saying some of these things, right? What do we hope to accomplish when we express displeasure, when we disagree? Some could simply say, you know, people just stand their opinion, you know, which I, 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 is fine, I guess. But to the others, I asked, what is the point? What is the point of calling Beyonce a demon? What is the point of saying Meg and Cardi deserve no respect? In the example of the Instagram response, I wonder what that IG user expected, right? The response to be. Because again, we all know that there is very little that we can do in these moments. Like what, <laughs> what do you want us to do, right? And some of us can say, oh, it's just random people running their mouth. But when I see a pattern with the same type of response towards the same type of people, you have to take note of the pathology and ask yourself what is behind it. So what I'm saying is that on your pathway to freedom, this is what it will cost you. It will cost you that. It will cost you those type of responses who actually attempt to discredit who you are. There will be an attempt to devalue your worth. There will be an attempt to mitigate whatever contributions and sacrifices you have made to become you and develop your craft. There will be an attempt to other you, to dehumanize you, to literally oust you from your community and deny you of the dreams you've worked immeasurably hard for. And because this exists, because this pathology exists, because we respond to black free women in this way, it makes me ask, do we really love black women? What I started with. We say we love black women. Some of us do. But do we? And please understand again the context in which I'm asking this question. What I am not saying is that loving someone is always being in agreement with them. I am also not saying that loving someone is not holding them accountable for their actions. But what I am saying is we have to ask ourselves under what conditions do we love black women? And what I've witnessed is that we only love black women under very pure, unrealistic conditions. We love them when they have a perfect, pure political record. We love them when they have the perfect expression of their desire of love for sex. We love them when there is a perfect expression of an African culture that we deem fit, but one that they have been connected to for generations. If women don't meet these conditions, what do we do? We other them, we oust them, we dehumanize them. If free black women don't meet these conditions because they're called the devil, we say throw the whole election away or we say they do not deserve respect. All examples of dehumanization, all examples of discrediting their existence and worth. This is what we do. <laughs> and this is why we don't love black women. Because I believe one of the foundations of loving someone is to know them. And I know, I believe in my whole heart that America really does not know black women. America does not know nor care to explore or consider what is the nuance of being a black woman. The decisions that black women have been forced to reckon with to get them to where they are, whether it is in their professional lives, relationships, or simply being whole. And I can take this back to the beginning when African women were forced to nurture and birth the proprietors of their own dehumanization as wet nurses and mothering the plantation owner's children who would in a few years rule over them, right? 
or to know that their bodies were the linchpin of the growth of the U.S., right? That the U.S. was built on the wombs of black women because black babies meant more labor and more labor meant more profit. And other decisions like choosing between our blackness and our womanhood, choosing to sacrifice myself for the sake of my family, or the requirement to quiet, quell, and perfect and make palatable my hair, my tone of voice, my facial expression to keep a job and even to progress in that same job. And all of that, that's performance. That has nothing to do with actual, with the actual skill set to make that job greater, to make that job work. The questioning of our intelligence when our recommendations and policies are second guess. Dealing with imposter syndrome when we are in fact afforded an opportunity. Or simply, y'all, this is so simple, to be believed when we speak. This is something that society at large has not considered when it comes to loving a Black woman. Because if they did, the complexity and the nuance of Black women showing up as free or expressing themselves as they deemed fit would be received with grace. So no, y'all don't really love a free Black woman because you don't know her. You can't love her because you don't know her. You only know what she can do for you. That's it. So to all my women, my black women, I believe when we get to this place of freedom, it will no doubt be lovely. It will no doubt be one of the best things you can experience in this current life to live as your full self, no barriers, without fear of mischaracterization, without fear of judgment, without fear of what will be taken from you, all that is possible, but I just want to be really clear in the work that I do, that that freedom will come with a cost, but a cost that I believe is worth it. So do not be surprised when society comes at you on your journey to live free. Do not be surprised when they come at you sideways, when they try to dehumanize you, when they try to discredit your worth and your value. And it is because they do not love you, and that's because they do not know you. Thank you so much for listening to the Good Girl Podcast. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, And this is the last episode for this season. We'll come back in September. It's only a few weeks, y'all. It's only a few weeks. Um, Because we're gearing up for some great conversations. I have some in the, um, like, in my back pocket in the in the waiting area in the waiting room and i'm really excited about some of those um i also have some amazing confessions coming up i'm getting those ready too and as always if you have a confession submit it to me you can um dm me uh or you can find it on our website thegoodgirlpodcast.com or you can um simply send me a quick email cameo at goodgirlradio.com and um send your confession on over And also, y'all, make sure you are still following us on the gram, on Facebook, on Twitter. We are still very active um, in our off season. And this is, again, just for a few weeks. I love doing my little, like, maybe two, three-minute videos. What's what's on my heart or maybe something someone shared that I think is worth your time. So make sure you are following us on Instagram. Interact with us. Tell us who you are. Tell us what episodes you liked, you loved, or maybe you said, "Mm, I think I'm good on that one. So, um... (laughs) Let us know. And as always, y'all, we got some gear coming out. Some new gear. Your girl just took some cute picture. Shout out to my, uh, (laughs) shout out to my squad. Like, that just made it work. Shout out to Tamila, photographer. Shout out to Kayla, the fashion architect. Shout out to Kiara. Um, Kiara Lanise, shout out to San. San, not even on social media, uh, but shout out to her who really made all of this happen to have some beautiful pictures, some gear that's coming up. Um, and y'all, this hair that's swanking, y'all, you can't tell me nothing. You're gonna see it in my next video. <laughs> You're going to see it in my next video. So again, thank you for listening to the Good Girl Podcast. I am Cameo King, and I hope and pray that you continue to believe in the good. Bye.